Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails 10. And this is because I can't get to all the emails that I'm getting from my Strange World show, which is on Tuesday nights at True Frequency Radio. So if anyone has any questions they want to ask me and uh, you know, they're somewhat coherent, I will read them at least here if I can't read them on the air. The email to reach me at is m, as in Mark, Sargent, S-A-R-G-E-N-T, 23, at comcast.net. So let's just get into it. I will answer in the order they were received. And this is from Ashley Kinsley. So Ashley writes, hey there, love your show and the new things you've opened my mind to. I'm still in the debunking stage, I guess you'd call it, of my journey. I watched Astronauts Gone Wild and was quite perplexed by their reactions. I can make sense of the astronauts that wanted no part of putting their hand on the Bible, but I wanted to know your thoughts of the three that actually did and swear that they walked on the moon. Obviously, no perjury charges would ever hold up since they were essentially contracted by the government. Lie and keep on lying, right? But I found it very interesting, the fellow that said he didn't think the Bible is anything more than historical document. Uh, and then last night I came across Magnificent Desolation, Walking on the Moon 3D that was done in 2005. Have you seen this? Uh, okay, so real quick, as far as the astronauts go, I believe that any astronaut that did actually swear on the Bible doesn't know anything or doesn't know as much as the others meaning the Apollo astronauts and some of the some of the later ones were told about what exactly the shape of the world is and again the, it comes down to simple logic which is if the world is an enclosed system that means there's a creator if there's a creator that means you are accountable and there are people looking or things looking over your shoulder and that means you're accountable for your actions. So would you do, not only would you not do anything malicious to anyone, but would you lie? Would you lie under oath knowing that it might count against you? I don't know how many people that would. Uh, as far as the magnificent desolation walking on the moon 3D in 2005, no, I have not seen this yet. So I may download that and take a look. In fact, it's the first time it's ever been brought up to me as far as I know. And in one of your interviews, I heard you say that we wouldn't be able to see the curvature of the Earth in any of the horizon pictures, no matter how high they were taken from. And I was wondering if you could explain that again. I'm not understanding. What I'm saying is, outside of NASA, there has never been a picture taken without a fisheye lens, of course. Never been taken by any civilian that shows the curvature of the Earth. And no, the Red Bull jump doesn't count because it's a fisheye lens and you can't see it. So, Because lots of people, and I put this challenge out to anybody... If you go up in an airplane and you take a picture with your phone or whatever out the window, do you see the curve when you're taking this picture? And some people say, oh, no, I see the curve. I go, that's fantastic. Great. Go home, put it on your laptop or tablet or whatever, and tell me if the curve is still there. And if it is, send it to me. And it's been 18 months. Nobody sent me any pictures. Nobody, not just me, anybody. No one sent a picture of the Earth uh, with a curvature from any altitude outside of NASA. And it's because it's not there. You want to see the curve, though, which is why people instinctively will say, oh, yeah, I've seen the curve. So I've had some people told, tell me, and not just a few, that they've seen the curve from the beach. It's like, really? Because that's sea level. Note the word there, sea level. And you're looking at horizon. Also another interesting word, horizontal, horizon. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say is there's no curvature anywhere down here. The only people that show any curvature whatsoever are the space agencies. Why is that? I don't wonder. Uh, let's see. She finishes with, and in one of your interviews, I heard you say we wouldn't be able to see the curvature. Oh, sorry. I'm not understanding. Anywho, thanks for the for everything you're doing and keep on exposing the truth, whatever that may be. Ashley from Georgia. P.S. I've tried talking to my husband about Flat Earth, and as, as far as he's concerned, it's a divorceable topic. <laughs> she goes, LOL, it's bizarre, right? Yeah. Do <laughs> divorceable topic. That's awesome. That's really, really great. I've never heard anyone say it like that. That's really, really great. Yeah, don't, don't bring it up to him again. It, some people just can't be helped. All right. This one is from Fabrice. F-A-B-R-I-C-E. Hey, Mark, what a discovery. June of 2016, I was watching several videos about the fake landing on the moon and now Mars. Let me laugh for a second. Why NASA is lying like that. And then I discovered the flat Earth theory. Bird, high jump, Antarctica treaty, firmament, dome, so many things to digest. But at the end, 
It becomes so clear to me now. Let's continue to tell the truth about our lovely earth. Greetings from Barcelona, Spain, Fabrice St. Martin. Thank you. Yeah, that was sent from his iPhone 6S Plus. I love how the phone companies just throw that at the end now. Uh, this one is called Flat Earth in German Television. Hi, Mark. You got me on the Flat Earth a year ago with your clues. Thanks for that. Here in Germany, a professor, Harold Lesch, from Institute of Astronomy and Astrophysics, University of Munich, tried to debunk Flat Earth on mainstream television science series called Terra X Lesch and Company. He had a few completely ridiculous and even false arguments that make no sense to prove the ball earth. You can see it here. Turn on translated subtitles. Uh, you can just look it up on YouTube, apparently. Uh, please send me your survival guide. All the good work. Greetings from Germany. From Garrett Vogtlander. Thanks, Garrett. That's awesome. Next one is called The Great Awakening. It's from William. Uh, it says, Mark, I was brought into this world as a point to ask questions. See full name, William T. Farney, F-A-H-R-N-E-Y. I have a magnitude of questions in which a list would not do justice, however. I have traveled the world both personally as well as within the armed forces in which the flat earth has been hiding in plain sight. This message is for nothing more than a great thank you as I have been enlightened by the awareness of the truth as I know it. I have opened some eyes to this in my everyday life as well, to be short. Uh, to be sure, to be short. It doesn't matter. Remember, I am reading these as they come in. I do not run a grammar check or a spell check on them. So please do run them yourself if you send, send me emails. A good friend of mine is a diehard shooter in which he has which has a robust experience with experience with marksmanship, which at first held his stance on the Coriolis effect. I have given my own hypothetical analogies as well as many of yours. This has caused uh, a decent into the rabbit hole for him. So kudos to your work. Hope you don't mind the piggyback of information. To close, I feel that once religion takes on this belief where, well, there will be an overturn within society. Any further correspondence would prove vital in my ongoing informative growth. A great thanks. William T. Farney, also known as WTF. Oh, that's good. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we will we will talk again. Paul writes, Flat Earth Club, the iOS app. Mark Sargent, something, something. And it, it, Mark Sargent, heavily featured. Hey, Mark, uh, it must be a good eight months since your Flat Earth clues appeared on my YouTube recommended list. Damn you. I can honestly say I've watched practically all your videos and my spare time has become a thing of the past. I found a small group of Flat Earth channels that I am happy to recommend to anyone that shows even the slightest interest, but I always ask them to watch your clues before venturing further. You have a unique way of getting over the narrative without being too preachy or painting Flat Earth as a bad thing. Well, it's, it's not a bad thing. So fast forward eight months and I would like to give something back to the community. As a longtime software engineer, I decided to do that in the best way I can and develop an app to help spread the word. As you know, not all sources of information are good ones, so I decided to create an app to help people discover the, the people that I believe are worthy of recommending. I hope you don't mind, but my opening recommended video is your Flat Earth Clues introduction. Plus, I've recommended the whole Flat Earth Clues playlist. On a side note, the app can play the subject matter testimony shows that some find difficult to play on iPhones and iPads. Oh, awesome. Uh, the program basically keeps track of your favorite channels, videos, and playlists and automatically builds a watch list of newly released videos from your favorite content providers. It also recommends videos other users are watching, so as the community grows, the best videos should become easier to find. I have lots of ideas on how that might be expanded once we get a community of users. I've also built in a curvature with observer height and numerology calculators for those who might be interested. Sadly, I couldn't release it completely free of charge because I have a server to pay for, but my feeling is a small donation to the cause might help away with, uh, keep away the trolls. Good point, actually. As a token of my appreciation and support, I've in included a redeem code for use in the App Store. Please keep up the good work, Mark. 
I'd love a shout out on TFR if possible. Well, uh, you, you missed the TFR thing. I'm getting so many phone calls. You're going to have to get it here. But get a lot of people to listen to this. I think people like yourself, Jaronism, Bob from Globebusters, David Weiss, Rory Cooper, Brian Mullins, and yes, even Patricia Steer and Eric DeBay are all great contributor, contributors to this awakening. Uh, and I salute you all. Best regards. Paul Bar Barnard, Flat Earth Club. He gives a promo code out, but I can't give it to you guys. I'm sorry. So you're just going to have to look up uh, Flat Earth Club on the apps, and uh, hopefully this will serve as a cool little shout-out for him. So thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. That's great. And normally I'd use it myself. Unfortunately, you know, I, don't, I rarely even turn on my cell phone now. I just forward everything to uh, my Skype number, uh, which goes into the, the show number. And then I try to answer stuff from there. So anybody that's trying to text me, anyone that's been trying to text me over the last month, that text is not being read because I literally have not turned on my phone for about a month. Some people are saying that's impossible. Anyway, uh, Lego Brick writes, Greeny, greetings from sunny Lay, L-E-I-T-H, Scotland. Thank you for your good works, opening eyes and minds. God bless you. 10 months in and still sh dumb, S-H-T-U-M? Brother-in-law, huge NASA fanboy, and a Cessna pilot got to walk dogs with him today. Keep trying to plant seeds. Might try GPS position on planes. Good show with the uh, uh, Marine captain. Love to hear anyone debate you. Not going to happen, though. Stay strong. Yours, David. And he's from Scotland. So thank you. Thank you very much, David. Very much appreciated. Uh, this one's just called Flat Earth, and it's from Mike. Hi, Mark. I've been listening to you and others on this subject for a while now. I am a professional artist, graphics designer, and have been using Photoshop daily since it came out. I could create any of the images that NASA shows, probably in my sleep. I agree with you, and especially on the point that the flat earth subject would not even be allowed on the internet by those who own the internet and run this world if they did not have a plan to use it against the masses. It seems to me that since this evil that has been hiding this info that surely there must be an underground or those who have kept the flat earth truth alive. What do we do now? What can we do now? What is our goal with this information? There must be believers with the ability and resources to hack into this evil system somehow. I know many other countries and people know the earth is not a globe. I just feel that now that I have this info, that I am stuck and frustrated, I am sure I am not alone. It's like winning the lottery and not getting a prize. Hmm, that's a good one. I do feel that I have a better outlook on life and this info has definitely changed me for the better. I guess that alone is a great prize. My children are kind of afraid of this subject. When I talk to them and tell me they get nervous and tell me to stop. It's like, okay, we discovered electricity, so what can we do with it? I don't think the evil ones understand that God has given man an excellent brain. They really believe they are superior. Why don't we think about a plan of action, find ways to keep info flowing outside of their web? We know we are being monitored. Yes, keep the info and proofs online for those who need to be taught of this deception for as long as we can, but how about the ones that who already know doing something about it? The flat earth info on the web is all the same now. It's and is just being rehashed. Those of us that know want to move forward. I would like to help if I can. Thanks, Mike. And yeah, Mike, uh, spreading the word right now is probably the biggest weapon that we have because there's so many people. I mean, the majority of people out there still don't know. But there, you know, more and more people come into the awakening slash community every day. So keep spreading the word. That's that's my. Uh, but you got to be careful of your audience. That's that's the big thing. So. Uh, this one's from Dale. Mark, I have been following you since I first watched your video, Under the Dome. I will be in Seattle, Washington next month, arriving the 18th and staying with my daughter through Thanksgiving. My daughter lives in Emerson. It would be great to meet up and chat. Uh, since I was in second grade and started to learn about gravity, I said BS. I even had the teacher mad at me for disagreeing with what she was trying to teach. The whole global teaching is just a smokescreen. Anyway, keep up the great work because you are dead on track for truth. Peace, Dale. And yeah, Dale, right currently I'm not in Seattle. I am up in Victoria, Canada. Uh, most of my family is in the Seattle area. I don't know if I'll be around. I'm probably going to be down for Thanksgiving, but not sure yet. So uh, I will save that email and maybe get a hold of you. 
Uh, let's see. This one's from uh, Woody. Uh, and he goes, Mark, brother, you are creating really neat content. You should be proud. Listening to it. Oh, I know this guy. Listening to it reminds me of uh, BSing with you back in Boulder, Colorado. It was awesome working for you. You're the best boss I ever had. I hope your numbers grow exponentially. It's neat to see good people rising up and succeeding. Thanks for being a badass, Wood. Oh, wow, I don't know if I'm actually a badass and stuff, but that's, that's awesome that you would, you would say something like that. Uh, let's see here. Pat writes, Hi, Mark. I remember once hearing a Globe Earth believer, I don't remember the spe specific video, saying that salt flats are not evidence of lack of Earth curvature because how do you know the Earth isn't curved beyond the boundaries of the flat area? Never mind the fact that salt flats are naturally occurring geographical features that were formed by forces beyond man's control. It seems that no amount of evidence is strong enough to overcome heavy indoctrination, much less stupidity. Now, couple this with the typical arguments about jetliner travel routes, the seasons, position of stars and constellations. All of these allow for endless arguments because of the essential nature of the variables. They cannot be measured easily or reliably without careful long-term study, significant expense, and or sophisticated instruments. However, all of them become academic if one considers only the undeniable requirement that a globular Earth must spin at over 1,000 miles per hour at the equator based on the figures provided by the establishment and accepted by all those who, are, who support the globular Earth fantasy. With reference to the well-known behavior of spinning objects, here's a video that I found that makes this very clear in terms supported by science and engineering. And it's called uh, Rim Velocity Miles Per Hour clo Closes the Flat Earth Case. Uh -huh. uh, and it's also at realflat.earth. And you can look it up on YouTube. The empirically demonst demonstrable and repeatable effects of the centrifugal force with respect to material strength, mass, radius, velocity can be shown and supported mathematically to apply to any practical scale of a spinning object. As the video implies, a spinning ball of the size, speed, and composition of the purported globe Earth simply cannot exist in this reality. Some people may argue that the magical force of gravity works to counter centrifugal effects that would otherwise cause the Earth to disintegrate. Of course, this countering effect of gravity does not help to protect jet turbines or bearings or anything that spins that is also smaller than the Earth from flying apart due to the effects of rim velocity. This should be the smoking gun evidence as it cannot rationally be disputed. Although I thought the same about the nonsense of a magical boundary between the atmosphere and the vacuum of space, something that puzzled me since childhood. Anyway, Maybe you want to put this example near the top of your list of collection of evidence. And that's from Pat. So thank you very much, Pat. That's awesome. Do I think it's the absolute silver silver bullet? Yeah, probably not. But it's it's still good. Again, you know, just add it to what's out there. Uh, this one's from Chun. Don't know where Chun is from. C-H-U-N. Hey, Mark, liked your YouTube on the flat earth idea. What holes are there to look at? Regards Chun. Oh, you mean like flaws in the theory right now? Um, I don't think there's any flaws in the theory. I think there's some stuff that we're still trying to figure out, but nothing, you know, because it would this this whole uh, community would have been shut down if there was a silver bullet that could have knocked the whole thing off the rails. So, well, I was mixing some metaphors there. So, uh, the 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 things that are still kind of in dispute are the uh, you know, is obviously the big one is the map. You know, what exactly is the scale of the map, the size, the actual size of the countries and the scale of the map? What exactly does the map look like? We know it's not a globe, but what exactly does it look like? Second one probably would be the Antarctic sun. Uh, you know, if is it being faked? It certainly seems like it right now or, you know, or because if it isn't being faked, that has to be explained by multiple light sources, I would think. Uh, there's there's a couple questions that we don't know, but that that's part of the, the draw because human beings naturally love a mystery. And we love looking into stuff like this. You know, we, we've got the, the core stuff down. But yeah, there's some fringe things we're still trying to work out. Kind of like the, the, the nagging little questions in any murder mystery. That's what we're trying to figure out right now. So anyway, thank you very much, Chun. Uh, this one's just called Hi. <laughs> sent, sent by Game. All right, I will see if, what their real name is. Let me scroll all the way to the bottom. 
Oh, it's Matthias. Okay, so it's Matthias. Hello, Mark. Nice Strange World 75. Thank you very much. I wrote you last year about the Allen interview on YouTube by M. O'Donnell, which I am sure you have are you had known already then. I knew the Earth was flat from your clue one. It felt like a memory that had been lost and was found back. This is like a scene in the movie Constantine. Uh, Constantine, check that out if anyone hasn't watched it. It's a, a great little flick with Keanu Reeves and Rachel Weiss and among others. Uh, to know something is not the same as believing something. The context here is the opposite of the casual use of the statement. If you believe in the Bible and the book of Genesis instead of the alleged proofs given by science, the faith uh, is far deeper than just knowing the flat earth. When you are talking about a simulation, it always makes me think of Max Payne. You're in a computer game, Max. I watched the Hungarian video last night with the laser pointing at the rubber boat on Lake Balaton, that's Dr. Zach, optics proved flat. Before that, I had searched for telescope experiments. There is one with power plant, which seems to prove the globe, and that's also on YouTube. Uh, we talked about Michelson Morley at school 20 years ago. So I think that all the experiments that describe the characteristics of light and the interpretation of them are somehow based on the assumed globe before it was proven. Then physics forgets that it is not proven due to NASA and television. I guess you agree. I think that the photons or light beams seem to react with the floor. Maybe they fall to the surface like water from a hose or there might be electromagnetic interferences with the denser ground below them. Optically, objects seem to be invisible from their base upwards very close to the floor. On higher levels, this effect tends to get smaller. So again, there is a certain unsharpness and optics are a beast like electricity. I discussed this with a friend. At the end, I could convince him that there was at least a reasonable doubt in the proofs given for the globe model. So in dubio pro rio, should, oh, I've never used that one, should kick in. That d did not convince him. Law terms don't convince anyone, not even lawyers, I guess. For my part, I think uh, after Michelson Morley, NASA would have had to prove the constant light speed of 300,000 kilometers a second in a second experiment. This as to exclude the possibility of the static and also flat Earth. NASA had way too much money and time ever since. Here's my friend's answer. If you get to space and see the globe, you just know that you don't have to prove it as you know it. Interesting point. Like NASA does not prove anything, and that is the ultimate proof. Brainwashing at its finest. If you are so happy about the life you live based on the globe, then go ahead. There might be much more fun further down the road, I said, and I think the best experiment to prove flat Earth is the following based on flawless logic. Go to sleep at night and imagine the Earth's restless, infinite rotation. Watch how you sleep, what you are dreaming of, and if you are fresh in the morning. The other day, just for the sake of the experiment, imagine the flat, stationary Earth. That does not move. Write down the difference. That got me convinced beyond the last, the tiny, uh, last tiny rest of doubt. Based on the O'Donnell stuff, we might actually be creating our universe as a consensus. Each of us being creative, each of us being creating souls that is pointing towards the Lisa video. On the other hand, the skies might be a mathematical exercise given to lead up to an astronomic science. That made mankind develop mathematics and astronomical equations, like the nifty wallpaper in the children's room or a complex crib mobile hanging it from the ceiling. You say God is efficient. I guess so. A new age like physicist Nassim Haramein said something similar, just as a reference not to impress you by name droppings. Nature does not invent many patterns. I watched some of the esoterical physics speeches as we agree that everything is fractal and might be scaling from smallest to biggest, being self-similar. The flat earth totally matches with our understanding of particles, like maybe an atom. There are a neutron and a proton in the inside of the nucleus and the electrically charged force field around it. Does not match 100%, but it's just an idea. Fractals seem to define everything. Forests are fractal in their design as now known. Computer simulations are realistic due to fractal mathematics, where the fractal repetition of macro and microcosmos exactly is placed here, I can only assume, but I like the thought. So far, greetings 
and love, Matthias from Germany. Thank you, Matthias. Well said. Uh, this one is called Antarctica versus Australia. Hey, Mark, enjoyed your interview in Clues 12. Good stuff. Here is something which might be of your interest. The official Antarctic coastline is 17,900 kilometers or 11,000 miles. The official Australian coastline is 35,000 kilometers or 22,000 miles. Please find attached the actual print screen from Google Earth showing that Australia is not two times bigger than Antarctica. If those Jesuit scientists have been watching our globe for the last 50 years, they should have known how to put land in the right proportions on a sphere, or at least a virtual one. And this is from uh, Kirill Shuttleoff. And uh, yeah, good, excellent point, because I, I thought that, you know, when you're looking at Google Earth, I thought that Antarctica was actually bigger. I've said this on multiple interviews. It looks bigger than Australia. But according to Google Earth, the map, the, the numbers side of it, it's more than twice, well, I'd say almost exactly twice as big, if, if you believe that, that Australia is twice as big as Antarctica. Boy, it certainly doesn't look like that for me. So somebody check that out when you get a chance and uh, take, some, take some screenshots like he, should, he, he did. That's, that's awesome. Uh, this one is called Plans to Shake Things Up with the Planet We Live On. I'm extremely driven through pure intention to figure out how to wake the world up. I feel, though, it needs to be done in such a way that it doesn't have the influence of criticism, thus avoiding unnecessary scrutiny. I just want to know why I've been living my whole life uh, being lied to. I'm fed up seeing the world and the people in it routinely do things unnaturally. Everything is unnatural. I feel a sense of imminence with our awakening, but no one needs to claim hero or founder, or we will all inherit the elite's drive, and that's pure domination. I honestly feel strongly about this and would appreciate some back-to-back -back ideas and rigorous communication in order to build larger communities on a version of education not government-owned. Also make the truth cool and not label us as flat earthers. The label alone has obtained its own stigma through pure association, and that's what we have to keep an eye on. Their deception has been so deep routed in our brains that every element of thinking things through to wake the world up also needs a reseated mindful approach evolving absolutely everyone. No intelligence complex, no political correctness required. Just be you and learn and eventually see what is naturally ours, and that's this earth and the true mysteries that lay before us. Please contact me at this number. I have ideas in every sector of life to induce the awakening process. Looking forward to hearing from you and apologize for the poorly written email I wrote on the fly. Kindest regards, John B. Thanks, John B. That's awesome. Uh, let's see, this one's called Do You Do Events? Just got turned to a YouTube channel, Flat Earth Clues Part 2, and I am hooked. Um, no, I, I don't currently do public speaking events, but I really haven't been asked to, to, to do many of those. I, I, I've been asked for to do a whole bunch of interviews, so I do those. So I'll, I'll do you know somebody's podcast or radio show or television show or whatever it is. I will do that. Uh, as far as speaking engagements, yeah, somebody wants to fly me out to wherever it is to talk about this and, and do a venue. Sure. Love to do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Need some tea. So keep that in mind. Uh, this one's called Hello and a Couple of Questions. And it's from... Who is this from? Joanna. Hi, Mark. I just want to start off by saying... Uh, thank you for doing all the work you do. It is such a blessing. I came into Flat Earth because someone very close to me brought it up. They also suggested I listen to Eric Dubé. I am very appreciative of the work that he does, but I, it wasn't until he blocked me, <laughs> shocker, when I tried to make an account on his blog for reasons I didn't know that I even started exploring other people. I've been following Zen Garcia, and when I saw you guys had done a show together, actually we've done two shows together now, I knew I had to go and listen to more of your videos. It is because of your videos that I've actually been able to get some people like my mom to actually start to understand why I believe the earth is flat. I think a lot of the videos that Eric does are just too technical and dry for a lot of people to be able to grasp the concepts. So it has been awesome to have someone that I can share that is actually understandable. It's true. I, my version is the dummy's version. Uh, anyway, there are a couple versions I wanted to talk to you about. 
first, I was wondering if you have been able to dive into the whole concept of there being no forests on Earth. The video caused me a lot of problems with people in my life, lol. Uh, I'm not sure why they can believe the Earth is flat, but cannot believe in things like a creator or giant trees. I haven't, yeah, and by the way, yes, I've, of course, I've, I've looked at, I reproduced that video almost immediately on my channel. I haven't had a lot of time to look into the tree thing, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of videos out there uh, analyzing it much more than what you did with the DIRTH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Just curious if you had anyone, any more to say about that. Uh, no, no, I... It's I've I've been I've talked about it on other interviews, so I'm not going to really go into it much. I do I believe the giant tree thing? Yeah, I kind of do believe the giant tree thing. I'm, I've been to Devil's Tower myself, up in Wyoming, and it's fascinating. Uh, finally, I guess I am just looking for some advice. I'm a college student who not only believes in Yahweh, but also believes the Earth is flat. Evolution is a lie. Gravity doesn't exist, and a whole myriad of other things. So far, we are in the fourth week of the term, and in at least over half of my philosophy classes, the flat Earth gets brought up. Its followers completely mocked, along with other things such as the faked moon landings and the Illuminati. It's actually blown my mind that these things are being brought up in the classroom. It's just so hard for me to sit through these things and try to stay quiet, especially when they are laughing about flat earth and using the excuse, well, we have pictures. It drives me nuts. Here we are in school being taught to ingest BS and learn how not to not think. I worry that my teachers will grade me uh, biased if I say something. Yeah, they probably will. I spent one whole term arguing vaccines with my microbiology teacher, another term arguing evolution with my anthropology teacher, a term arguing GMOs with my health teacher, and once again, I have a teacher willing to call anyone who might think differently stupid. Am I in the wrong to keep quiet, or do I just pass the time so I can jump through all the hoops to the other side? Uh, yeah, you, you got to know your audience. You've got to pick your battles. Do not, uh, as I mentioned in the Strange World episode, I got an email from somebody recently who got beat up because they were pushing Flat Earth too hard in a group where he was outnumbered. So you, spread the Flat Earth, but do it like Fight Club. Come at it sideways. You know, don't don't be sledgehammer to the face with flat earth, you know, come, you know, kind of saddle up uh, on side, on the side of somebody. Anyway, uh, where are all the other people my age and that have any kind of idea about the truth? I have all this information and knowledge and no way to share it. My generation is so lost. I want to be able to at least save a few before we really screw things up even more. Most of the time, people just tell me to drop out of traditional college and go to trade school, essentially stick my head in the sand or live in a hole. But if we don't get out, there and spread the word, how is anything ever going to change? What can I do? What should I do? I refuse to bury this knowledge because then I would cease to be honest and I refuse to give up my dreams and science just because they continue to lie and deceive. Sorry for making this message so long. I have just no one to turn to. I am surrounded by so many confused young people. All I want to do is make this earth a better place because I was here. You're awesome. Thanks for all that you do. Never stop. We need more people like you. Shalom and love. Joanna. Thanks very much, Joanna. And you're on the right track. Just keep going. You'll be fine. Uh, let's see here. This is from my website from MarkSargent.com. Uh, hey, Mark, what a nice site. I sent you an email last week. Yeah, glad to be a member of a great community of flatters. I'm still working on the new site for the models. Wish uh, I was as good uh, at it as you. You're welcome to give out my new email if anyone wants a model. Uh, they have evolved a bit since I made your first one. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't have the, his email in front of me. Well, actually, I could probably try to dig it up real fast. This is from Chris Pontius. So if you want to actually a physical, not a computer, but a physical flat earth model. Now, let's see if I can find it real quick. One second, guys. Chris Pontius. Yeah, I got his email. If anyone wants it, they're not cheap. At least a couple hundred bucks. I can tell you that right now. Uh, but if anyone wants to contact Chris Pontius and get an actual flat earth model, then you've probably seen the one that I had at my, my place where the lights are kind of spinning around the top of it. It's, it's kind of cool. He's made, that was one of the early, early prototypes. You can contact him at flat, F-L-A-T-I-N-I-T, -I -I so flatten it, get it, at gmail.com. And uh, he, will, he will help you out as best he can. So thank you, thank you, Chris. And hopefully you listen to either one of those. Uh, sun in the clouds photo. 
Hey, been listening to and watching your stuff on Flat Earth. Actually got started on it a couple of months ago with your stuff. Since then, I haven't been able to let it go and watched, listened to, and read much on it since then. I am a Bible believer, which made it all the more interesting knowing that the Bible set what the Bible says on the subject. Anyway, I was driving home the other evening with the sun setting, with a beautiful sunset. Uh, so photography being one of my hobbies, I stopped and took several pictures of it. I zoomed in at about 50 power and adjusted the settings, bringing out the perfect circle of the sun. Something about it kept bugging me. So I continued to study the pictures when it hit me like a ton of bricks. The sun was in the clouds, showing clearly in the photos around and behind the sun. Now this presents a problem if the sun is 93 million miles away. I think that's right, yes it is right. It's actually 92 and change, but it doesn't really matter, 93 is fine. So I thought I'd share the picture with you to see what your thoughts were of it, if you could use it. I, um, I can remove the watermarks if need be. Thanks for your work on the subject, peace Daniel. Um, uh, w is right and is right that's your last name that's on it that's, that's awesome uh yeah send me if you get a chance daniel send me one without the watermarks I, i'd love to just add it in the slideshow it, they're interesting shots again do i think they're the, the 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 silver bullet that'll kill the rest of the globalists no not a, not at all I, you know but it'll, it'll add to the to the argument no question so send that send that to me when you get a chance uh, let's see how much time we spent. So oh, we got plenty of time. All right. This one is from David, I believe. Dear Mark, big fan of all your work. I first got into conspiracies when my 11th grade teacher explained a handful of points about 9-11. Just a few, but all made sense. So much sense that I couldn't believe I didn't catch any of them. I didn't take a second look at building seven or considered heating points on the twin towers. Point is, after learning the truth of my BS government, I said I would be more aware and catch all BS that comes my way. Then nearly 10 years later, I find Crow Triple Seven videos on the lunar wave and I'm blown away. I missed that altogether. Instantly, my faith was restored in almost a rebirth Phoenix from the ashes style. All of NASA now joins the BS list. I wonder how many more times he's going to put BS in this email. Uh, then comes a Flat Earth Clues video on YouTube that made me laugh. I'm serious. It made me laugh, but I gave it a chance. An hour in, and I'm hooked, and I can't get enough of Flat Earth. I'm looking up ODD, Jaredism, Eric Dubay, Russian Vids, Insanity, Insanity, as others. Finding Crow 777 and Mark Sargent was about a year and a half ago, and I believe these days my nose can only smell the BS. There it is. Uh, that spews daily for my government and nation. I love this place, but boy, do we have to do some major house cleaning. Anyway, love what you do. I listen to your show every week and learn the hard way of trying to share what I learned with others. Keep doing what you're doing and don't forget to send me the survival guide. P.S. You always say picture when you mean to say picture. Just thought I'd let you know that's how big of a fan I am. And you're right. You know what? I Picture versus picture, picture, picture. Well, I'll try to work on that. That's going to be a tough one because lots of people say picture. I'm just not enunciating as well. Charlotte writes, Flat Earth Clues Video 7. Oh boy, I know what this one is because I get several of these every week. I have just watched this video and tested out your theory. The very first one I tried, Santiago, Chile to Sydney, Australia failed. I can get a direct flight. The proposed flight time ties up with the distance. Can you explain this? Yes. Uh, go to Clue 9. That is the whole reason I did Clue 9. I got I did Clue 9 just because I was getting, I don't know, 10, 12, 20 emails a day about Video 7. About, oh, no, you still can get a direct flight. It's like it doesn't bother you that 95% of the flights – going from Southern Hemisphere to Southern Hemisphere are connections. 95% of them, at least, and I'm, I'm just throwing out a round number, it's probably higher. It's like they, everyone mentions like one or two. There's only like five non-stops in the entire Southern Hemisphere. And and people's like, oh, that disproves flat Earth. It's like, no, it doesn't because you can't prove the route, which I talk about in Clue 9. That's why I'm talking. I got to do this. I got to read these emails every once in a while. So anyway, thank you, Charlotte. Uh, let's see. This one's from, who is this from? I don't know who this is from. I think it's from Chase. Mark Sargent, I enjoyed listening uh, live to your October 17th show. I was in my tent celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. It was a very Isaiah 40 moment listening about the dome in a dome inside of the dome. Oh, nice. I want to share some thoughts. I apologize if you have addressed these before. One, if you begin to type Isaiah into Google, Isaiah 40 pops up. Hmm. 
Speaking of Bible passages, the SpaceX satellite that exploded was named Amos 6. Amos 6 in the Bible talks of unavoidable planned destruction. Nice. That's good. I didn't hear that one. So knowing the way some world powers like to use twisted Bible references, could the planning of the explosion have been hiding in plain sight all along? Yeah, you bet it was. That's great catch. Awesome. Again, love the research. You have mentioned that the current presidential candidates for the major parties are terrible, but I would present that they are good for the flat earth. Now, I know the most likely knee-jerk reactions come from this community. Votes don't count, secret societies, reptilians, etc. Yes, I fully understand that and am using those possibilities to my advantage. Here's my observation. Controlled, organic, or a bit of both, this scenario is happening. 2015-2016 has been the time that almost every conspiracy theorist has been vindicated. The exposed corruptions of the Clintons, Republican Party, and media have created doubt about the system and even the most... Mm, a most America, nice, M-E-R-I-C-K. That's a t-shirt right there, America. Um, people that I know, Trump's rhetoric and candidacy has created a great marker to show who are the most frustrated. I have been able to use this scenario to plant seeds about the fact that NASA is part of the government and the flat earth. I generally use two lines. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if earth was really flat and... We are like a Bigfoot and a flat earth away from the whole new world. One thing I noticed is that people are less hostile to it now. They are dropping the that's crazy reaction and actually seem to ponder it for a second. That's one step closer. I don't think that the globe model is the great deception, but a part. I'll use the football analogy. I think that the globe is a kickoff return that gave science the ball, the Copernican model, evolution theory, the Big Bang, and transhumanism put them in field goal range. This is American football, by the way. And the appearance of so-called aliens stating that they are from some distant something and are here to usher us into some golden age will be the score. If that is even close, can you imagine trying to refute their story? Of course, you will have many Christians using biblical arguments against them, but imagine saying to the people around you that they can't be our space brothers because we live in an enclosed system with a dome. It would be rough. 5. I have heard an argument for the globe that stars in the southern hemisphere are observed as moving around a single point in the sky that seems to be over the South Pole. My question about this is how it happens. I understand that it's a simulation. You can program this or anything else to happen. What I would like to know is if you have seen any evidence this supported observation is legitimate. I cannot find anyone to have done this. I have only found people claiming that someone did. Reminds me of the people who know a guy that knows a guy who worked for NASA. Six, oh, I had to answer his question. Uh, yeah, I've seen some, well, I've seen some pictures and some time-lapse stuff, and I, I don't think they're all fake. Uh, the, the stuff taken at the equator is very, very interesting. But again, I don't worry about the sky. And no, I'm not going to use the word simulation or matrix or anything in this case, because I can just use the word planetarium. If the planetarium is big enough, you can put anything on the screen. It's A planetarium is no different than an IMAX theater. You're just moving the screen from a wall to a ceiling. And since you can put anything on an IMAX wall, why can't you put anything on the ceiling? It's not that hard to understand. Six, I have respectfully challenged a radio host named Josh Toley, T-O or Toley, T-O-L-L-E-Y, to have you and or Rob Skiba on to talk about Flat Earth. He has mentioned it respectively, but negatively with other guests. And I have told him that it is time that he has an actual researcher on. Thank you for your work. I enjoy your show, Chase. Thanks, Chase. That is awesome. And we still are ripping through these. Okay. <clears throat> this is from David. Hey, Mark, you should look up the World View Balloon Company and how they're being fought to stop from going into business. World View Balloon Company. They will carry passengers into the stratosphere. I wonder why they want to stop them so badly. This is all happening in Tucson, Arizona. Keep up the good work, Dave, in Tucson. Yeah, somebody look up. Uh, I, I sometimes I just in this case I hadn't actually read this email so the worldview balloon company and why they're having such a hard time getting people into space or getting them up into the stratosphere interesting interesting because I know other companies are trying it anyway uh, who's next Clayton Clayton writes sup homie he actually wrote sup homie love your videos and you're the one that got me started down the rabbit hole lol Keep pushing on, my man, and hopefully the world will follow. 
I'm hoping once I start back in school, I'm going to start a group after school uh, type deal and get the word out on everything, not just Flat Earth. Anyway, uh, I'm writing because I wanted to ask if you've ever read the book World Beyond the Pose. Polls. Yes, I, I have glanced through it. If you haven't, then I'd say it, it is a must read for anyone looking into the Flat Earth. One interesting fact about this book is that uh, you can only get it if you pay something like $500. Well, yeah, if you want the hard copy. Uh, my thought is that is how many books do you know that cost that much? I don't know much about books, but that seems a little sketchy to me. If there wasn't anything to it, then why cost so much? But as of this writing, I know where you can download the PDF for free. Yes, so do I. Uh, not sure for how long, but fee, uh, please let all your friends and followers know they can go check it out. The book to me is a little hard to understand in spots, but uh, the gist isn't. Go to 432thedrop.com. Look for the library tab or link. It should be right on the home page. There's a lot of books and videos in there. Actually, if you do some research on that site, well, the guy is trying to get across is pretty interesting. You should check it out. His religious belief I can't really get on board with, but to each his own. Basically, he's saying black people in the USA are the Israelites uh, talked about in the Bible and everything was stolen from them. Really? Uh, plus, most of the black slaves were actually already here in the U.S. and only 5% came from overseas. Mm, I don't know about that. Well, actually, which I actually believe that. Oh, okay. Um, there's good evidence that black people were already here. Uh, we're here already. Anyway, I just wanted to help out any way I can. And I think that book really brings up some interesting ideas. I like how he thinks we live on an endless flat plane. And if we left our boundaries, we would eventually hit more lands like ours. I believe that too. He also thinks that all the stars we see in the sky are just lands like ours. Hmm. So basically s someone uh, at one of the stars would look up and see us as a light or star like dot. Uh, like I said, it's very interesting. He also states in the beginning that our lie of a world was done by someone using sorcery. Mm. Uh, not sure about that, but hey, it's still interesting and would be insane if true. Well, if you have read it or know about it, please, uh, if you find time, let me know. And what you think about it, I'd for sure appreciate it. And please pass that website on to others you might think that would be interested. Hopefully it will still be free when people look at that site. Just more stuff I'd like to say in the Flat Earth. I think the more people that read it, the better. I think they will try to remove it one day. Well, they haven't tried it yet. I'm sure they don't want anyone reading it. And that's why the price is so high. Most people would just pay, say, uh, screw that price, not paying that. Uh, like I said, it's still free to download as far as I know on the website. Got, got it on my phone always now. It's not there. Then maybe I can find a way to get it off my phone. So on and so on. Keep dropping the truth, my brother. Out. Oh, peace out. He's got a little peace sign hand there. I missed that. It was really tiny. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this one's from Ross. Ross writes, Good day from Australia. Ross Thatcher again. Been listening to your podcast as often as possible. As, as possible. Not sure if you've ever gotten my original email, but I live in hope. Big fan of your work. Anyway, another thought occurred to me this morning, which I don't think has ever been given much attention in the Flat Earth movement, and that is, what about crop circles? Now that we know everything about space and aliens has been faked, it's very curious about that famous crop circle, which had an image of the gray alien. I don't really buy that particular crop, cir crop circle. You want to see an interesting crop circle, though. Um, two things I want to mention here real quick. This is off email, which is uh, one would be the Milk Hill crop circle, the big one from some years ago. That sucker was huge. It was like covered half a million square feet over rolling terrain. It was it was circles and circles and circles. And, and, and it was so complex that honestly, you could have given me a, a Photoshop and a couple days, maybe a week. And I don't know if I could have drawn it on my screen accurately you know that that well and you're saying somebody did that in a field at night covering half a million square feet with ropes and boards no not a chance uh the other thing is interesting is forget about you know, not only crop circles look up the crop writing um or the crop patterns of krasnodor russia uh k-r-a-s-n-o-d-o-r krasnodor or, or with a z either one those are fascinating. Pro some people have probably seen some of those slides I put. I used to use the Kras Krasnodor slides. I still I still do every once in a while in some of the Strange World episodes. Those are interesting. That looks like pages of text written from left to right in a language no one is going to be able to decipher anytime soon. So do I think the crop circles are real? Yes, I do. Do I think they're from other worlds? Eh, maybe other civilizations? Sure. 
but not Mars and Venus and things like that. I, I, but I do think crop circles are real. I don't necessarily like the, the gray one, the, the, the face of the gray alien, um, because most of the really cool crop circles are symmetrical. They've got wonderful patterns. Uh, why they're doing them in fields and not on rock, you know, maybe they're not allowed to. Then maybe that's one of the caveats is that you can't do a crop circle and burn it into rock because it'd be permanent and it would be unexplainable and it would and it would be too disruptive. So they put it in fields and as soon as the field's cut, well, that's it. Anyway, um, let's see here. I'm leaning heavily towards the gray aliens being a possible future um, devoluted humankind whose technology has advanced far enough to discover time travel abilities. This opens up potentially massive new paradigm shift with postulates that all of history itself may not even have happened yet until we go back in time and do it. Oh boy, don't don't get me into that whole time paradox thing. Thus explaining the sudden uprising of a fully developed and advanced civilization such as ancient Egypt and other anomalies. And perhaps crop circles are messages from other friendly associates, such as those who assisted Admiral Byrd in his fantastic voyage into the North Pole. Anyway, love to hear your thoughts. Cheers, Ross. Thank you, Ross. That is awesome. Uh, we can do a few more, I think. Bob Brown writes. What's Bob Brown right? Just, hey, Mark, just finishing watching your videos over the flat earth and wanted to say thanks for taking the time and trying to inform others. As you described yourself and your mindset when first confronted with this topic, it was the same for me. But as I get deeper down the rabbit hole, I have made a rule for myself when I'm confronted with new ideas. That rule is if you're going to believe one theory, then by rule of thumb, I've had to accept the possibility of every conspiracy theory being true. Mm. In simpler words, have an open mind. It's a great rule to go by, uh, but in some cases, as in flat earth, it actually ends up pissing me off, <laughs> LOL, that I really get ticked off when the uh, DIY test makes perfect sense. Uh, but I have run into a few gridlocks of info that only someone like else like me would uh, have had to run into as well, not with traditional teachings, but contradictions with other theories. As I'm sure you're aware, truth for me comes from being able to connect the dots with information you were actually looking for. So confirmation with a different topic while being able to take away from the fear of an agenda-driven point of view. Which is the purpose of this email, trying to connect dots to fill holes? One has to do with why. Yes, I know your explanation is just that, your explanation. But in order to think and build and test and retest something on the scale of the earth, doesn't make sense without a purpose. I know the arts came from it, but that was by accident. Ooh, I don't know about that creative process, you know, a lot of this stuff was put in here to inspire people, to put just the time into making it from start to finish, not to have a purpose behind it is just wasting the most valuable thing that's known, time. The reason of why to create this scares me more than anything else. Well, you should be a little worried because I also believe that the, the one of the big reasons of why is uh, to change our perspective in that I think it's an unlimited uh, universe outside of this and I think we were already there. But in order to recharge that perspective, in order to appreciate the unlimited, you have to be constricted. And we are put, there's nothing more conflicting than this world. It is inevitable. It is unavoidable conflict, uh, a limited lifespan. Uh, I, again, quote the Joe Walsh song, I can't complain, but sometimes I still do. It doesn't matter how rich, how powerful, how beautiful, how anything you are, you cannot avoid conflict. Think about that. Number two, this question has to do with the connection with other info that I have come to believe through testing, where in cases like Nibiru and Planet X, it would seem to hurt that theory, I could still easily tie it together. As well as Hollow Earth, I could argue, makes more sense than this, but where I start to lose connections is with theories that I also can't let go of. Example of these being parallel universes, UFOs, ETs, even though you can make case for ETs, time travel and just the very relevant question, it, of if the sky is projected onto the firmament, then just where the hell are we? Yeah, he's down the rabbit hole, that's for sure. Number three, just to keep this question a little shorter, I need a better explanation for the sun with this theory. Who made it and of course, where the hell are we? <laughs> oh, poor guy. Number four, last question. This one has to do with your view, which uh, was conveyed firmly that people would become more noble. Yes, some would, but I fear most wouldn't. Examples of this being our own government has this info and they still seem to hold the view that life is getting cheaper every day. If you look into the past, uh, all you will see are the people who will kill, murder uh, others in God's name. 
that would be like giving them an audience for those actions. The last reason affects me as well. I struggle with the feeling of it being a prison. We have the mindset of infinite knowledge and this puts a cap on that in the way of people relate it to what they know, which for me feels no different than the government telling uh, me what is safe uh, to know and what isn't. With the flat earth model just reinforces somebody is making knowledge based decisions for me, which I hate. I don't use that word easily, by the way. Hate, I mean. I will do more research connecting the dots, but I want to get your views on these as well. Thank you for taking the time to read this, and thank you for making the info available with facts tested instead of stories. Have a good day. Thanks, Robert Poston. And uh, yeah, Robert, I know where your head's at. I do. It's just going to take a while for you to um, to adjust to it. it you know, the, the why, you're going to have to, a lot of it you're going to have to resolve yourself. The rest of it will be resolved for you because I think one day we are going to find out exactly what this place is for. Uh, let's see here. This one's from, we're going to do one more. Uh, hi, Mark. First off, thanks. I'm a big Flat Earth fan. I live in Victoria, Canada. I can I hear you on your shows. You spend some of your time here. Thought if you were in town sometime, want to have a beer, talk Flat Earth. Then I am up to speed on everything. I have some friends with high-powered lasers and P900s that would be interested in doing some experiments. Thanks for your time, Corey. Oh, uh, yeah, Corey. We may have to get together. So uh, if you get a chance, um, email me again, and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can set something up. That'd, that'd be kind of fun. I don't know Victoria very well. I, I still don't know all the streets very well. But, yeah, I could totally meet up with you. You, you may have to find me, though. Uh, let's do – can we do one more? One more? Yeah, maybe. This one's from – uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's, th this will be the last one. Hey, um, Mr. Sergeant, Mr. Sergeant, really? Uh, my name is Chris. I have followed your work from the beginning. I must say that, uh, thank you for endeavoring to shed light upon the flat earth subject. I am one of the many lives you have touched. I have often wondered why this flat earth cover up is perpetuated so vigorously by these elitists. The conclusion I have drawn over the years is they wish to hide God and his true timepiece in the heavens. I know you keep in contact with Zen Garcia regularly. And the last show you did was great. Other than the disclosure of the Flat Earth, where is all this going? Not to say that the day that Flat Earth is disclosed, you won't be dancing in the streets like myself. Anyhow, I've been an avid student of scripture and in particular on the subject of the Sabbath day mentioning therein. I fell 100% feel, 100% confident that the Flat Earth cover-up has been perpetuated specifically to cover up this issue. As we read in scripture that sin is the transgression of the law, one is sinning if commandments are broken and thus we are separated from God. What better way to keep the masses in the dark and in sin than to keep up this lie and keep up keep us feeling insignificant. I have also followed Zen's work on the Enochian, uh, it must be the Enoch, Enochian ca calendar, of which I'm sure you are aware. I feel the Book of Enoch is yet another deception on the calendar issue, yet you'll find many who exalt uh, it on the level of scripture as though God was unable to ensure that the writings of supposedly Enoch were put in the Bible we all have today. Please take a gander at the video link below and accept the challenge or not. That's up to you, but I know how you uh, like a challenge. All the best, Mark. A guy from Texas named Chris. So thank you, thank you, Chris. And thank you, everyone. We're going to wrap that up with all the emails up with that one. And uh, we'll do another email. And, you know, again, you can all always contact me at msergeant23 at comcast.net. And I'll try to get it on Strange World, but as you know, I get a lot more phone calls in Strange World, so I may have to put it on a, on a uh, email show like this. So thanks very much, guys, and uh, talk to you next time.